Yo Joes, there's nothing I like doing on a Sunday more than curling up with a good book. And today I'm going to be curling up with The Art of G.I. Joe Volume 3 by 3D Joes, which is available on 3djoes.com along with this really beautiful slipcase, which I showed off in the previous episode. And today we're going to be taking a look at the years 1986 to 1987. Like the other volumes, it has this really pretty, glossy, gleamy, shiny hollow foil, AccuFoil cover. And same on the back. It actually does create a full image when you open it up all the way. And let's just do a virtual read through. So on the front page we have another forward by Kirk Bazigian and also an introduction by Karsten Metaxas, the man responsible for all of these amazing collections of art. And taking a look at the 86 Joes, one difference from the previous volumes is uh, the previous ones had one page per figure and this time we're fitting two figures per page just because there's so many released in this one. And we've got the bat, we've got beachhead. This was another one of my favorite Joes growing up. And uh, it was really cool that they included another authority figure in GI Joe. Beachhead was ranked behind uh, Hawk and Flint and Duke, but he kind of felt like what Duke originally was, the, uh, the field commander. And we got Dial Tone here. He's got the desire, but not the ability. And Dr. Mindbender, the evil genius of Cobra who helped create Serpentor. And this guy, General Hawk. So not quite as much backlash towards General Hawk uh, as Rodimus Prime had in Transformers. Rodimus Prime just kind of came out of nowhere, replaced the beloved Optimus Prime. This guy had been there from the very beginning, stepped out for a while. He was included with the MMS in 82. So it was really cool that they brought Hawk back, promoted him to a general, uh, gave him brown hair, I guess, to distinguish him from Duke. But uh, great looking figure and uh, a real throwback to the original, well, maybe not the OG 13, the original 13 Joes, but certainly the second year with the leather bomber jacket and the camo pants. And then another one of my favorites, since I'm a Snow Joe, good old Iceberg. And Leatherneck, the Marine. These are such high quality pictures that you almost think that they're carded figures. Very, very amazing detail. And just to give you an idea of how big an actual figure is, uh, so the images in this book aren't actually that much smaller than an actual carded figure. So. That's what it was before. Still get tons of detail in here. We've got Lifeline, the Medic, another one of my favorites. Good old Low Light. And the Computer Man mainframe with his uh, portable laptop computer. I don't know if you could put that on your lap, it might crush you. But that's pretty cool seeing one of the original Computer Joes. And Monkey Wrench, one of the new Dreadnoughts, fits right in with the original 13. And this was the year we were getting more uh, remakes. We've got the Hawk remake, and we've got the Roadblock remake. Uh, big improvement, I thought, over the original version, uh, just for the feet. The feet were notoriously bad on the original one, always breaking the heels. So this one's a little more durable, kind of looks like a uh, cross country, cross country's Havoc outfit and very cool machine gun with him too. I'm telling you, these are such high quality. It, I almost want to, it almost feels like you can touch the bubble here, the plastic. It's really crisp and clear. And like I said in the previous episodes, uh, there's nothing quite like having it printed on actual paper. Digital is great on a screen. But this, this is just a little bit more lifelike. And uh, since all of this card art, we did spend so many hours staring at it. 
either in the toy store or at home. Uh, this is what we're used to, actually printed out on a piece of paper that you can you can hold closer to your face to see all the detail. This is really incredible. Nice and sharp. Sharp detail. We got sci-fi. This is where things started to get a little bit well, sci-fi with G.I. Joe. With this bright green kind of Robocop looking guy. We got a Cobra Viper and a new G.I. Joe seal wetsuit. So instead of giving uh, Torpedo a new outfit, they just created a new seal. I always thought it was interesting that he, I think he's wearing shorts in, in the uh, card art. Whereas uh, he's got a long wetsuit for the actual figure. It's interesting. And we flip the page. And we've got Zartan's siblings. We've got Xandar and Zarana. And both of them uh, turn blue in the sun, just like Zartan did. Another interesting thing is it, there's no mention of that on the actual card. Probably on the back, but uh, you'd think that that would be plastered everywhere. It turns blue in the sunlight. And we get a look at some of the vehicles from the 86 line. And he is the most evil foe of G.I. Joe, Serpentor. The new Cobra Emperor with Air Chariot. And we get the Cobra Hydra Sled. Along with the Cobra Stun. I really don't do uh, card art like this anymore. Look at this beauty. The Cobra Night Raven. S3P. I always thought this looked like Firefox from the Clint Eastwood movie. And the Conquest X30 with Ah Nerds Slipstream. It's very cool. And the Cobra Terror Drome. That's a double page spread because it's so huge. Lots going on in this artwork right here. We've got the fire bat up here. We've got all the cobras on the top. Fending off the enemy. A whole bunch down here as well. Crimson Twins. Who's this in the jail? Never even noticed this. I think that's Dial Tone. Figures he'd be the one that got caught. And got some Dreadnoughts. Dr. Mindbender is working on something. And some more Dreadnought stuff. These are just repaints, recolors of existing vehicles. Uh, Dreadnought Air Assault. So that's a G.I. Joe Skyhawk and uh, Cobra Fang. Special feature, change color when exposed to sunlight. So those have a little heads up that they're color changing. And then we got the more repaints, Dreadnought Ground Assault. So the vamp recolored for the umpteenth time and a ram cycle in dreadnought colors. That looks pretty cool. And a little color change thing too. So that's a Sears exclusive. Same as up here, which is why they are a little more rare than most of the vehicles were available. And the dreadnought swamp fire. Some parts change color when exposed to light. Not all of them. Boy, the Dreadnoughts really got a lot of uh, vehicles in 86. Got the Thunder Machine with Thrasher. And no color change gimmick on that one. I always thought, uh, yeah, they got Monkey Wrench's hair color wrong there. That's Monkey Wrench in there. But he looks blonde to me. He's supposed to be a brunette. That's interesting. And some Joe small size vehicles. Got the Devilfish, which I got to take out to uh, the local river not too long ago. 
Take some pictures of it in the wild. And the recon sled. Good old bazooka. And the havoc. Some people love it, some people don't love it. But it was the 86 tank. And looking a little more sci fi than the previous Mobat and Mauler tanks. I always liked this hovercraft in the back. That's pretty cool. But once again, they've got lifeline shooting at people. So that doesn't really seem appropriate. It's also interesting that uh, they've got uh, cross country inside this thing. Usually he's mounted up on top right there, but they've got the good old General Hawk up there. And a picture of the figure included. Let me flip the page again. One of the coolest G.I. Joe air vehicles, the Tomahawk with lift ticket. That is a great copter, which uh, a couple years ago got reissued, updated as the Eagle Hawk. I don't know why Sci-Fi is carrying his gun in the cockpit. It should be in the back for that. And that's an interesting crew. Iceberg kind of looks weird wherever you put him that's not in a snow setting. So you got uh, Roadblock with his short sleeves and Iceberg melting here in his Arctic gear. And Lifeline is getting ready to save somebody, I guess. And then the Sarge, Ten Hut, Maggot. Sergeant Slaughter with the Triple T. So for those who weren't able to get him as the mail away, this was their second chance in his more traditional looking camo and black tank top look that he wore for uh, the end of his WWF run in the 80s. And he's got another gyrene on there with him, Leatherneck, that makes sense. With the uh, infamously easy to lose baton in there. One of my favorite figures. And some more small sized uh, Cobra and Joe little uh, bases, mini bases, the Cobra Surveillance Port, which is run by my good friend Eric. And you can check that out on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook, as well as the Surveillance Port website. And we've got the Law. No, it's not Law and Order. It's the Laser Artillery Weapon. And that's cool. They've got General Hawk there with this little thing, because going back to the days of when he was included with the MMS. And then the Outpost Defender Battle Station. This is a really cool one. Just a great place to hunker down like an Alabama tick. And fend off the advancing forces of Cobra. And some more original artwork. This is the uh, G.I. Joe Magazine, Winter 87. So far this whole uh, book is going up and down. Because the other ones are like this. This one is going this way. And some more covers uh, from books. We've got Everglades Swamp Terror. Got Gung Ho and Lady J in there. And then Operation Deathstone. It'd be cool if some of these would pop up online, like scanned form. Uh, it'd be nice to be able to go through and read these again. That's one of the great things about this modern age where you don't always have to hunt down a lot of these old vintage books. Uh, you can just find them in digital format. Maybe Hasbro could one day reissue them in digital format, maybe on Amazon. But that's really cool. I've never seen these before. And it's cool to see this old vintage style artwork that I'm so used to being employed for things like this. And some more books. Operation Weapons Disaster. Great titles. Operation Snow Job. That's interesting. There's no snow job here. And it's roadblock in his tank top. 
not really dressed appropriately for the weather. And some more artwork down here. It's always cool seeing the original stuff later on, years down the road. When we're getting into the more sci-fi stuff to see the original OD Green Joes and their vehicles as the collector's case. And here we've got... Now, if you will, step into Cobra's inner sanctum. It almost looks like he's on a commode. Jojo troops, you're doomed to defeat. That's an interesting uh, picture of Major Blood there. You don't usually see him depicted like that. It's ultra realistic. And some artwork of the Cobra weaponry, artillery, water moccasin, fang, hiss tank. And I've seen this one before. Live the Adventure. This one showed up on a lot of vehicles, uh, boxes, little inserts for the figures. Live the Adventure, assignment number one, Invade Cobra Island. With a, an official seal that almost looks like it's 3D. almost feels like you can feel the bumps on it. Such high quality pictures. Really nice. And some stickers. Such a wonderful combination of different artwork in here. I'm glad it's not just figure art and vehicle box art. It's like a it's like a time capsule of all of the different stuff that was available. And now we're into the 87 figures. So there's a lot of Joe fans who kind of Call it quits, they draw the line at 86, because that's where the Sunbow cartoon ended. Well, uh, I guess there was the movie, which introduced a few characters, but I like the 87 line. There's Big Boa, very Rocky-esque type of Cobra. Good old Chuckles, Chuckles B.I. It's the undercover Joe, used so frequently for whenever you need a Hawaiian shirt. Like for a Magnum PI custom or a Judge Milton C. Hardcastle custom. And there's Cobra Commander in his new digs. His new battle armor outfit. Big upgrade from the old formal getup. G.I. Joe got a new paratrooper in 87 with crazy legs. And there's Croc Master who looks like he would have fit right in with the Dreadnoughts. He's the crocodile handler, reptile trainer. And I gotta say, that is a really awesome accessory. It was always cool when Joes and Cobras came with animals and that croc looks bigger than he is. And good old Crystal Ball, really a uh, bizarre character, but he came with one of these kind of uh, lenticular stickers on his shield, hologram type of thing. So they were getting into the hologram stuff with Visionaries, and uh, also with G.I. Joe a little bit. And Lieutenant Falcon. Really awesome figure. Shotgun, backpack that holds a knife and has an antenna on it. Really cool. So, not full bore sci-fi yet in 87 with really cool throwback figures like Lieutenant Falcon. Speaking of sci-fi figures, Fast Draw, who is just, he's got everything. He's got this uh, double rocket launcher. It's always interesting that on the card art you can see his eyes, but the actual figure, the visor is solid. That he's really starting to get out there with, with the look of the outfit. Kind of reminds me of Blowtorch, really geared up. And Marine Dress Blues. Is this the first figure that came with stickers, decals, which uh, go on his arms? He might be. Really cool formal, formal Joe. Never understood why the hat was glued onto the head. Thought it would have been so much better if the hat was re removable. Probably more people would lose it, but you could customize some cool gung-ho figures. And the ceremonial sword as well. And then you got Jinx, some of the movie Joes down here. 
uh, the new Ninja Jinx and Law and Order, the uh, Dog and Canine Unit Military Police. Everybody loves this guy, Outback, the survivalist. Simple figure, but so cool. Huge backpack with a harness and a gun. And uh, also one of the first shows to have this gimmick where something could plug into his leg. A uh, flashlight plugs into his leg. I loved this guy when I was a kid, Psych Out. But he's super sci-fi again. I mean, the bright green. We're gonna start seeing that more and more as the years go by. And all of this wild equipment hooks onto his forearms and he's got antenna sticking out of his head. Yeah, it's, it's starting to really get far away from the original OD-13. Uh, speaking of getting really out there, Raptor, who has the Cobra Falconeer, because Falconer, sorry, I guess they needed a Falconer in addition to a Reptile Handler of a falcon it's pretty wild sneak peek which uh, it's not exactly um, subtle with his giant telescope right there for spying that's another great figure and got the techno viper every year needed a new type of viper and the tribute to Mr. Larry Hama. It's good old Tunnel Rat, bearing Larry's likeness. It's uh, interesting that his card art is him in a tunnel or some, some sort of enclosed environment with the TNT bag, because most of these guys, they're just, it's like the guy with an exploding background, but they actually showed you his regular environment around him and a really cool figure as well then we get into battle force 2000 a lot of joe fans are split on these guys i had a bunch of them too uh, actually i had these two avalanche and blaster and that's really really getting sci-fi and some more science fiction in the world of gi joe we got blocker and Dodger, very simple code names for these guys. Knockdown, that was one of my favorites from Battle, uh, from uh, Battle Force 2000. And Maverick, I always thought this was a really cool pilot figure. Even if you don't like Battle Force 2000, that's a, just a great figure to stick in. A Sky Striker, if you'll fit. Um, a Phantom, a Conquest. Yeah, they had some really cool stuff. And then we got Slaughter's Renegades, two, uh, two three-packs actually. Slaughter's Renegades right here. And the Cobra Law team. Yeah, Cobra Law. Really wild figure right there, Galobulus with the giant snake body to him. Nemesis Enforcer. Um, I was never really very happy with this one, never got it because that to me was kind of weird and I, I thought this guy should be twice as big or at least a little bit bigger maybe use a visionary's body or something the size of a visionary's body for ne nemesis enforcer and then we've got the 87 vehicles and play sets with the gi joe defiant the uh, holy grail for many joe fans we got the Coastal Defender and the, uh, that's an interesting code name, Road Toad. Cobra Buzzbore. Getting some really interesting looking vehicles here. And a more traditional one, the Cobra Jet Pack. And the Cobra Maggot. One of Sar Sergeant Slaughter's favorite vehicles. Interesting name. Mom, can I have a maggot? No. And the Cobra Mamba. Oh, I love this thing. Beautiful helicopter with uh, two ejectable pods, double blades. Just awesome. Awesome copter. Even though uh, 
they doubled up all of the card art here. This is a this is a really thick book. We've still got quite a bit to go here. Another out there vehicle, Cobra Pogo. Bounce around in the Pogo. Love this one, Cobra Sea Ray. Submarine, their answer to the shark, but it actually detaches into two different uh, vehicles. So there's this little submersible, and then this part can, uh, I guess, swim around, or it looks like it can fly too, just like the uh, shark. Cobra Wolf, their answer to the snowcat. Really, really awesome Arctic half track type of thing. And the Crossfire, which was a radio controlled RC uh, GI Joe vehicle. So really cool that you could control it, remote control, but also have a figure in it and drive it around. And the GI Joe Defiant. This is a holy grail for many Joe fans, right up there with the USS flag giant giant complex and i uh, i really don't have any desire to get one not only because of the price but also it uh it can't handle its own weight that if you just have it sitting there on display uh this under part will pieces will crack just from the weight on top of it so I wouldn't want to pay that much for something that old and then have it break from not even doing anything. And that's really beautiful card art. See uh, the Falconer in action there. Gung Ho, that's really awesome. And his dress blues jumping into action. Yeah, that's awesome. Beautiful. And then some more card art here. We got Zanzibar. Dreadnought Pirate and the Dreadnought Cycle and the Persuader. Interesting name for a tank. I say that's very persuasive. And the Slam Strategic Long Range Artillery Machine. Those acronyms again. And the big boy, the Mobile Command Center. A great follow-up to the Joe's original base. It's a, it's a tank, it's a base, it's a transformer. And like the Terror Drone box, lots of stuff going on in here. You got Chuckles, walking around with his gun for some reason. The Sarge, it's in the repair bay. And you got Falcon on the computer. Gung-ho, just checking everything out. <laughs> Cobra Commander's in jail, as usual. That's all right, Zartan will get him out in 10 minutes. Fast Draw, that's a good launching spot for Fast Draw. And some more artwork. For the Mobile Command Center, who's in the jail this time. Hard to tell, oh, it's Big Boa. Really cool. Standing at attention even there. I don't think I've ever seen that one before. And we're nearing the end here. Got some Battle Force 2000 vehicles. There's the Dominator snow tank for Avalanche. And the Eliminator for Blocker. And then you got the Marauder. I'm not too familiar with Battle Force 2000, so um, I don't really know all their names or their vehicle names. There's a Sky Sweeper. Uh, that's, it's getting a little too far out there for my tastes. I really like the military aspect of G.I. Joe, so the Vector Jet. I love Joe Jets, but that's with the bubble on the back. Uh, that was starting to really get out there for me. Vindicator hovercraft. It just looked like stuff from another toy line, not G.I. Joe. And then action packs. And battle gear. I remember that one. And a Cobra action pack as well. 
battle gear was always very appreciated from losing so many weapons and backpacks playing outside. And some more brand new card art that I've never seen before. This is from, uh, what is this thing? Magazine. And another magazine. Magazine covers. This stuff looks great for just being a magazine cover. It looks uh, right up there on the same quality as the card art. And here's another magazine cover. Looks great that these have been recovered. Because I've never seen, I've never seen these before. Really beautiful artwork. And another magazine cover. Cobra Commander, that's a beautiful picture of the uh, Thunder Machine. Here's a uh, lifeline with a little helicopter deal. That's a great shot right there. Crazy Legs kicking Monkey Wrench in the head as he's landing. That one just looks like Falcon is like trying to bear hug, trying to grab Cobra Commander. This one's gorgeous. Look at that. Defiant American flag. Beautiful. It's a beautiful collage right there. And Marvel Books Big Locker Storybook. Storybook covers. Really beautiful. Amazing artwork. I think G.I. Joe spawned a lot of art lovers in the 80s because they spared no expense on the artwork of G.I. Joe. I think the toys were art and art on the boxes and file cards and magazines were obviously art. And some more book covers. Operation Tiger Strike. That's a great one of Snake Eyes right there. I haven't seen a lot of him in this one. Serpentor and the Mummy Warrior. It's cool. And the last page. Oh, a couple pages left. Got some of the Sarge. That's awesome for slaughter lovers. Arctic Sarge. It's great. Since slaughter didn't come on a single card, it's cool to have this, what I guess would have been used for a single card artwork in here. And these are great. Never seen these before, but Again, this is what I guess card art would look like if these drivers of vehicles were on single cards. So you've got Crankcase, um, Thunder, Frostbite, Copperhead, his tank driver, and Stinger driver. I wonder why they didn't use these. Like this one for the single carded G.I. Joe Club Frostbite. Or this one for the Slaughter figure. That would have been a cool idea. Slaughter and Cobra Commander. Another special offer and the final page. Joe's disembarking from the Tomahawk. Beautiful action shot and the final image is Falcon with the American flag. It's been battered a little bit, a little tattered, but still flying high. Thanks to G.I. Joe. Oh, that's great. Law and his dog Order versus Croc Master and, and the Croc. Who do you bet on? I don't know. My money might be on the German Shepherd. These are great dogs. Another awesome art book from 3D Joe's. Such a beautiful cover on this. So if you'd like to own a copy of this yourself, head over to 3djoes.com. You can get individual volumes, or you can get the entire set and the slipcase cover. A really beautiful addition to any G.I. Joe collection. Thanks for watching, and until next time, Yo Joe!